Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the uh, second epistle to the Corinthians, verse by verse. And in our last study, we were somewhere around verse 11. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we stand in your presence by means of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, thankful for the hope that's ours in Christ and anxiously looking forward to that day when we'll be with you for all eternity. I ask that the Holy Spirit might take this hour, seal to our hearts the truth, the comfort, the hope of your word. Direct us to look up for our redemption draweth nigh Strip away that which is said, which is error, which is foolish, that which is carnal. But teach us truth as we study together your precious word. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. So in our last study, we were in the area of verses 9 uh, through 11 of uh, chapter 10. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 9 through 11, we spent some time looking uh, at our opportunity, our privilege, uh, and our responsibility as ministers of the grace of God. I suggested to you all that the 10th chapter begins with the Holy Spirit presenting the authority of the Word of God. Uh, a defense, an apologetic, you might say. Uh, we know that God chose Paul to complete the Word of God. If we look at the edifying of the body of believers, that Word is always used by the Holy Spirit in the epistles of Paul. I think it's used one time in Acts, uh, uh, where it, has to, it deals with the same subject, the building up of the body of Christ, the body of believers. The Word of God is what builds us up. I believe that the tenth chapter is an argument, if you will, uh, uh, for the authority of God's messengers, uh, not an isolated passage of Scripture that deals only with Paul, you know, just with his convictions and with his actions, but Rather, it's a passage of Scripture which deals with the ministry of the Word of God in the hands of those whom God has chosen. Apparently, uh, there's been some argument there at Corinth regarding what, what is truth, what's authority, who do we listen to. Uh, and I don't think that the appeal of the chapter is for the authority of Paul as a man but for the authority of the Word of God as it's uh, revealed by Paul, or, or in what the Holy Spirit has led Paul to, to write. Uh, that's the authority of appeal that I see. He's not boasting, verse 8. Uh, the purpose is not to boast. The purpose is not to pull down, but the purpose is to build up, to edify them. And even if a boast were made of what had been done through Paul in that activity, uh, it would not put Paul to shame, uh, which to me that shows the certainty, the stamp of God's approval in what was done. As we've gone down through the text, uh, Paul uh, tells us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he would be the same in person that he was in the letter. In other words, it, it doesn't matter how he looks or how good his speech is or the uh, ability that he has, his skills, his talents, uh, or whatever, but, but that what matters is the content. It's not his physical appearance, uh, it's not his presentation, but the content of what is presented. And we get down to verse 11, where uh, we see that surely the Holy Spirit wants it clearly understood that what is said in the Word, what is written in the Word, is what will be done and worked through the minister of God. 
And so by the end of the 11th verse, we see, uh, we see there the Holy Spirit stamp of authority and approval upon the Word of God and the work of God is manifested in, in the Apostle Paul. And of course, the application is to uh, the administration of the Word of God by any of us who, who are members of the body of Christ. And so now in verse 12, for we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves. Now, that's a slight change if you have the authorized version. We, we absolutely dare not. It's, a, it's, a, it's the, the powerful negative for not. Uh, we, we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those that commend themselves. Uh, the way that they commend themselves is that their standard is themselves. Uh, they comparing themselves or measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves with themselves do not understand. Now I'm going to suggest to you folks that the do not understand or, or the are not wise of, of the 12th verse is an indication that they are not indwelt by the Spirit of God. And that the wisdom or the understanding that it, that's suggested in the 12th verse is not a, uh, well, it's not a PhD from Dallas Theological Seminary or, or some doctrinal uh, level of education. Uh, from some university, but rather it's, it's an indication of the understanding that comes by the inspiration of God, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, uh, and uh, the new nature uh, that we have in Christ Jesus. Because once we do not have the Word of God, and once we don't have the new nature, well, the only authority is man. They measure themselves by themselves. The text says we don't classify ourselves as belonging to such ones. So if we take the Word of God away, uh, our standard of comparison has to be what man can do. In fact, that's, that's a very typical activity and a tremendous amount of work that's done for Jesus Christ today. It's very common to set up methods and compare those methods with other methods and, and techniques, picking you know, out those that work and refusing to you know, use those that, that, uh, that don't, as, as though the, the measure is production rather than the Word of God. Now, that's very typical, of course, in, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, in, our, uh, in our human activity, in our business activity. That's exactly the way that we measure. That's the way that we make comparisons. You know, we set up our own standards, and then we shoot for our own standards. Of course, if, if, some, if one of us uh, sets himself up as the standard, it does not mean that he or she is not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So don't, 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 be conf don't let me confuse you here. Uh, I don't mean to confuse you folks. Uh, doesn't mean that he's not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I just think that the Holy Spirit is telling us here that this is what those who are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit do. You know, why would we live as those whom we're not, like those we're not? That's not who we are. Man sets himself up as the standard, or, or he sets another person up as the standard. Uh, so... 
the, the standard then will, uh, will never be any better than the standard that men can set. Now, the Holy Spirit has Paul declare, basically, you know, in a nutshell, uh, we wouldn't dare do that. We wouldn't dare set up a standard of any kind. That is a man-made standard. You know, one set up by man. As far as God's work is concerned, that shows no understanding. I believe the 12th verse is a powerful, powerful verse against any attempt by man to set up what he thinks is right and then shoot for it. You know, whether that be in the work of, of a church and, and, uh, or evangelism, education, whatever it might be. As far as the work of Christ is concerned, we don't set up the standard. The standard, in fact, is the Word of God. You know, if you want to measure the work of the Apostle Paul in Corinth, how does it jive with what God has revealed? But that's what he, I believe he goes on to say. Uh, verse 13 But we will not boast of things without our measure. Uh, will not boast of things without our measure. The word our there is italicized. Ain't there in the original text. It was added by the translators. I think the verse says, will not boast about things which cannot be measured. Not of things uh, without our measure. But in fact, we're not going to boast of things that cannot be measured. Uh, the inference, I believe, is very clear. That if man sets up the standard, you have no ability to measure. They comparing themselves, measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves. That is exactly what man does. You know, we set the standard by which we compare ourselves with ourselves. And boy, are we good at it. Too good at it. But it's not wise. It isn't wise. The church is not Folks, the church is not the U.S. Bureau of Standards. You know, you know where, where the, uh, your yardstick and my yardstick can be measured against a common standard yardstick that's better than either yours or mine. I think that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. If you and I set up the standard, if, if we're the very ones that set up the standard and then we work for it, well... There's, there's stupidity in this activity. But we also have the mind of Christ, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to boast about things that can't be measured. You know, when a, when a, when a company, any company, I guess... Most kind, of, you'd say probably just about any company, when they uh, uh, when they they make a product. When when the company that makes the product also makes the standard that measures the product, you got a problem. You know, you have a, what do they call that? Circular reasoning. It can't be done. These are things that cannot be measured, but according to the standard that God has set up, and, it, and it's a standard that He's distributed to us, and, and even to you through us, it came even to you, says the text. We know what the standard is. God has given it. He's revealed it in His Word. He's revealed it through His apostles. And once His Word is complete... We have a standard set up by God, not one set up by ourselves. We do not stretch ourselves beyond. 
That is, we do not go beyond that standard which God has set. You know, as though we had something that you didn't have, that, that, that were uh, superior to you or different from you. For we have even come to you in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't stretch beyond as though we reach not unto you. My, my Bible says as though it's something different from you. We actually came to you in the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things that cannot be measured. Uh, and particularly, I'm speaking of other men's work. You know, how do you measure what they did? If it is not, Folks, if it is not based on this book, how can it be measured? It, it can't be measured if the standard's no good. We don't do that. We don't boast of other men's labors, but we have a certain hope says the text, that when your faith is increased, and I've pointed out in past videos how the word hope in Scripture is, is, is not wishful thinking. It's, it's a guaranteed expectation. We have a certain hope that when your faith is increased, we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. Now, I'm only going to suggest to you what I think that verse means. It, it, it seems to me that God is saying that His operation, the way God's grace is administered is from faith to faith. You know, we, we saw that in, when we studied through Romans that God is going to work in your life through somebody else's life and on and on and on it goes. You know, we're not talking about a thing which cannot be measured. Uh that is the product of other men's work, but we have a certain hope that when your faith is increased, the, ex the expectation is not that it may be increased or it may not, uh, but, but that it will be, that there is a certainty in the work of God through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ that not only results in an increase to you, that is a, a building up of your, your faith, uh, the word edification that we had in verse 8. But the output of that is that it goes beyond you and then it's measured by the, the canon that, that God has set up by the rule that God has set up that from you then this good news will flow out into other regions and to others I think the passage deals with the work of faith, the administration of the grace of God uh, administered by those whose measure is the Word of God, works in the lives of believers, and that goes beyond you. You know, it might be your cousin, Bubba, whatever, or, or someone on another continent. Uh, maybe both, probably is. What I believe it is, is a, a presentation by the Holy Spirit that the proper work of God is the work that builds up. Not only building up the individual, but building up the entire body, the whole body, the body of Christ, not just another believer. In other words, the teaching of the Word of God is not just to build you up or me up, but to build us up together in the body of Christ, that we become a building fitly framed together as the body of Jesus Christ. And I, I think God's purpose, God's interest is in building up His body. You know, He doesn't have a greater interest in uh, me than He does you. 
or vice versa. Doesn't have a, have a greater interest in, he, in you than he has in, a, in a, a, another class of people someplace else. It would seem to me that the building up is not only the individual, but maybe the, even primarily the body of Christ. The verse stresses to me that God's concern is not just me, but the body, the whole body of Christ. I think what the, I think the Holy Spirit is saying here that what men are talking about when they, when they come to discuss the uh, production, the, the development, the great things that are being done. Uh, in the name of Christ, uh, since they have no standard, if they don't use the Word of God other, other than a, a man-made standard, uh, uh, these are things, folks, that are impossible to measure. You know, uh, here's some pastor telling me, you know, just how much the Lord has blessed his ministry or his church and and how God's working in His church, and I say, boy, that's just wonderful. I, I think that's marvelous. How do you, how do you measure that? Well, well, we burned the mortgage, we put asphalt on the uh, parking lot, and, or, or our subscribers has doubled in the last four years, and uh, or our, or our offerings are up, or, you know, or whatever. And I, I reckon I could go on listing a few other, other standards maybe you get the point and i guess what i saw in this passage is that if we use that kind of criteria we can't measure i mean sure we can we can measure it against the criteria we've set up uh, how do i measure another man's labor i don't know his heart god looks on the heart i don't uh, the only way I can measure it is, is to set up a man-made standard to measure it against. Probably my own heart, which I don't even know all that well. Uh, and I think that maybe if I look at that man's work in the light of the Word of God, I can see it to be without content. You know, and that, that may very well fit the passage when I look at the, at the pulling down, not the, the building up in verse 8, uh, our authority which has been given to us by God to build up, not to pull down. We were just told uh, that the weapons of our warfare are for the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, that is the, the reasonings, the logic of men. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, a weaponry that will pull that down uh, that will cast it down, and, and that's the Word of God. The Word of God. Our weapons are not carnal, fleshly, but spiritual. So as the believers at Corinth are built up, the result or the, or, 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 or the uh, effect, uh, if, if measured against the Word of God, is that the body of Christ will be built up universally, that it will work through their faith to build up in the gospel of Christ. You know, using man as the standard of measurement, uh, that isn't the way that we work. That isn't even our interest. That's not our purpose. Uh, he that glories or boasts, let him glory in the Lord says the text. You know, if we're going to make any boast, if, if we're going to make any comparison, if we're going to make any measuring, then let it be the standard that God has given in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it doesn't matter whether we commend ourselves or not. Uh, that's not what's important. It's not, it's not He that commends Himself that's approved, but it's whom the Lord commends and, and I think that's crucially important in the life of every Christian. You know, the easiest thing to do is to follow the crowd. Dearly beloved, Christ paid my debt. We sing it. Jesus paid it all. 
but it seems to me the supremely important consideration of Scripture is that I do not have a zero balance on my ledger sheet. I have a credit balance, which is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You know, if, if, if all I have is a, is a zero balance, I'm in deep trouble. Because there might be another debit or, or another credit. At least today, the, the popular position appears to be that there's, you know, the, there's like this barrel full of money. And every time I get a negative balance, well, I, you know, I just pull out a little bit more and I, I bring it down to zero. But the beautiful good news of the gospel is that God has credited to my account the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, if you belong to Him, you stand before God as righteous as His Son. That's how the Father looks at you as His child. Few Christians realize that. And that righteousness, I can't use it up. I, I, I never can use it up. And I suddenly realize that the sin question is settled once and for all. It's not a matter of getting sins forgiven over and over and over and over and over and over again. God, how horrible that must be to be a Christian and, and think that you have to do that. The sin issue is settled forever in the life of the Christian. And I have a, a subtle stability before God. I have imputed to my account, to my ledger sheet, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He that glories, let him glory in the Lord, not boasting about what I've done for Christ, but glorying in the standard that God set up in the finished work of Jesus Christ. If that's done, it seems to me the body is built up. I, I think that's what the passage is saying. For it is not he that commends himself, but whom the Lord commends. Are you, are you really going to suggest to me that the, the commendation of the Lord is based upon my production? What I want you to get out of this passage is, is the authority of the Word of God and the authority of those who minister it correctly. You know, the standard of that ministry is the Word of God, but the glorying is the finished work of Jesus Christ and the imputed righteousness of Christ. That's, that's, that's what counts. That's what counts. If, if we are commended by a standard that we set up, well... That doesn't make any difference. But if my balance shows the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to me, that is beyond marvelous. That's beyond measure. That's the ultimate aim of, of this administration of the grace of God. And now it looks like I'm going to have a couple of chapters where the Holy Spirit says, let me show you how this works in one man's life, and that man's life is Paul. You know, if you're looking for some indication of the inspiration of Scripture, read the next several chapters, because it's contrary to everything that we know about Paul. That he'd want to write those next two chapters. The Greek word commend there is, is really interesting in this context. It's, it's really a compound Greek word that, that means to stand with. So you could translate commend. Uh, it's not he who stands with himself, but rather the one whom the Lord is standing with. Not the one who stands with the Lord, but the one whom the Lord stands with. That's a uh, tremendous difference. 
Now, I, I don't want to put words in God's mouth, but the grand announcement of the gospel, you'll see it in the 17th verse of Philemon. You receive him as myself, says Paul. That's what Jesus Christ says to God in, in my place. The one the Lord stands with. Note how the Holy Spirit puts things first for emphasis. Uh, the Greek language naturally does that. Uh, uh, it's the language God chose for the New Testament. Koine Greek. And the first thing he put was receive him as myself. And, and oh, incidentally, if he owes you anything, I'll pay it. Huh? You see the order? There. It's beautiful. I'm so very glad that Jesus Christ paid my sin debt. But to me, the supreme announcement of the gospel is that my life is hid with Christ in God. That Jesus Christ is saying to the Father, receive Him as you receive me. Or as I read it in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. That settled the sin question. That we might be made the righteousness of God. That's my credit balance. Imagine having a credit balance equal to the righteousness of God in Christ who stands with us. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Until next time, thanks for watching.